Hey everybody, Bohush here, the casual expert, and I'm speaking for photodeoxpro.com. Now we recently released a video where we used a lens like this, a 500 millimeter lens that I found at a thrift store for $25. And thanks to an adapter, we were able to mount it on a Sony camera and have huge telephoto. We filmed that uh, water tower back there, and you can see how close we got with the 500 millimeter. And actually, since then, I picked up this lens, which is a duplicate. This is, I was there on half price day, so this is only 20 bucks. So I guess these lenses are just every place, and it's a cheap way to get your camera in even closer. But what if you got a little more money to spend and you need to get closer still, or you wanna shoot the moon and see craters and stuff like that? Well, I went back to the thrift store, and for 100 bucks, I got this motorized telescope, I got the tripod legs, I got the controller, I got a whole bunch of other gimmicks, and it's a ready to run kind of outfit that you can attach a camera to. And I'm gonna show you, this is the Mead, I wanna say EX90, and if I'm wrong, I'll display right down here what it actually is. But um, this guy has a motor in it, let's turn it on. Uh, a motor is very, very nice, because when you're talking about extreme magnification, it's hard to move the lens in tiny increments. Think about how hard it is to focus, even just using a regular zoom lens or a telephoto like that 500 mil. So this guy lets you really get very fine control over where it is you're aiming. Now you saw the results we got with a 500 millimeter telephoto lens, but this guy is 1250 millimeters. So more than twice as much magnification as that other lens is. Uh, you just have to take a few steps to be able to mount a camera onto this guy. Now, normally, you put an eyepiece right here. That's where you look at the moon and stuff. And next to it is this little sighting scope. The sighting scope is very low magnification, but it has crosshairs. So you can aim at you know, what it is you're trying to see and then really dial it in with the full magnification. Now, this telescope has a camera port in the back, but you don't attach the camera right, right onto the body of the scope. You need one of these tubes. And the tube splits apart. This is actually how you control magnification, because remember, this isn't a zoom. Uh, you've got a very simple lens system inside. It's a reflecting lens, which we'll get to in just a minute. But your lower level of magnification is just by using one tube. If you need a higher level of magnification, like you want to see craters on the moon and stuff, you use this other tube. And then on the back, this is a T2 thread. And if you remember, we talked about this. Back in the day with lenses, camera, I should say lens manufacturers didn't want to make a separate lens for each camera mount. So they would just make the lens body and then that thread was just this generic thread and you'd get an adapter to plug this onto a Canon camera or a Nikon camera or whatever. So this is the same thing. So now in order to mount a Sony camera on here, we need this guy, which is a T2 lens to E-mount adapter. And this just screws on thusly, like that. And then, oh, and this is important. This tube has this smart way of reorienting where the thread is. So your camera does not have to get stuck on there upside down. Okay, the water tower is actually right behind where, where you are right now. I could use the motor to bring the telescope around to aim at the water tower, but that's gonna take a while. So you can actually sort of disengage the motor and move this guy around manually. I'm gonna use the sighting scope to get right in line with the water tower and then tighten all these motor couplings back up. Now I use the motor to get really where I need to. Now the thing is, I don't know if it's because the motor's kind of weak, uh, the batteries are weak, if the camera's a little bit heavy. You might need to give it a little help here and there, I found. Uh, but, okay, we're all lined up. Let's see the shot that we get through the telescope. Now we're way close up, in fact, it's not a very pretty picture, but let's just grab a shot and I'll show you a couple ways to change what this picture looks like. Um, because you don't really wanna to touch the camera, either you wanna use some kind of remote or uh, you can use the countdown thing, you know, where you get in the picture and you have the camera countdown 10 seconds while, you know, then it trips the shutter. So let's just, uh, we've got that set up here. It's counting down, the little vibration I caused by touching it will settle down by then and it'll take a shot. Now remember we said that this is a fixed focal length lens, it is not a zoom. So we're a little too pushed into that water tower, it's not a very good picture. So if we want to get a wider view, what we do is we take out one section of this tube. So let me do that. So now we get rid of that. 
And now we just attach the camera to this shorter length tube. So we've got a bit more vignetting uh, in, this, uh, in this kind of view. I don't see it as a problem. Uh, at least not with this composition. Now the composition is kind of tight, you know, the letters are just barely fitting in my image. Uh, so maybe I would need to move back a little bit and monkey around with placement. But still, pretty cool to be able to get that close on the water tower that's, I don't know, a half mile away, something like that. Now, like I said before, the telescope is basically a very simple lens. So you do focus it, there's this knob right here that lets you focus. There's also a focus control on the remote. And the lens is an F 13.8. There's no aperture control, it's just permanently a 13.8. So that means you're going to want to use this outside or um, for stuff like shooting at the moon. Now that might sound low, like you don't have enough light to get a good picture, but remember when you're shooting the moon, the moon is reflecting the sun. It is actually way brighter than you might think it is. And you can get a beautiful shot even shooting at a 13.8. So this is a pretty flexible and fun setup for photo and video, even though it's not expressly made for photo and video. Uh, I'm glad I got the motorized guy because I was able to make tiny moves to make adjustments to, you know, get exactly the angle that I wanted. Whereas moving a tripod head manually, you know, sometimes you tighten the tripod head and it moves over a little bit. The motor was nice and it's hard to complain about the price when I paid either 100 or 85 for the whole thing. I actually don't remember, but uh, you know, a C note for being able to have this kind of play both on land and in space is pretty cool. Now you can get these kinds of lenses made for cameras and they call them like reflector lenses or there's a uh, Russian name they have for these lenses which again I don't remember but I will superimpose right here. And uh, they are cool, they're great for wildlife and they're amazingly cheap. They, you can get a new one for around a hundred bucks if you want. The issue that people have with them is that the bokeh is kind of donut shaped. As you can see there's this kind of spot in the middle and that's just how the mirror is set up inside and so that means your bokeh is kind of a donut. Some people think it's kind of yucky. Uh, me, I don't mind. I think it's kind of cool and being able to get way in to take a picture is a lot of fun whether you're shooting the stars or just something going on a little bit down the road. All right I hope you had fun experimenting with this weird lens, I mean telescope, I mean lens. If you click on the link down below this video, you'll see the lens adapter that we use to make this possible, plus a link to some of this telescope stuff if you want to learn more. Uh, don't forget to click right here to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, we're doing kooky experiments like this all the time, and you can be the first to know about it. Uh, my name's Bahush, I'm the Casual Expert. Thanks for watching.